Hey guys, thanks for joining me. So a slightly different video today, just because I've had an opportunity to be able to film in the kitchen, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity for me to talk about some of the supplementation I use. A few of you have asked me what are my ideas on, on supplements and what ones do I take? I remember I briefly talked about it in a Q&A video, but I know a lot of people didn't tune into them just because they are very, very long-winded videos. So I thought I would give it its own video. And obviously now I'm in the kitchen, I can actually show you firsthand the supplements and stuff that I take. But like anything, if you're listening to someone on the internet, when it comes to nutritional advice or supplementation advice, the best thing to do is to do your own research. And if you need to, always consult with a doctor or your nutritionist. So again, I may be talking about my recommendations, but these are things I'm taking and I am taking responsibility if I have an effect of it or anything like that. But it's my body, so I'm choosing what to put in it. So if you're listening to it on the internet, do your own research, make sure you look it up to make sure that you know it's not gonna interact with any, say if you're having medication or different things that actually have intolerances to everything, always do your own research and if in doubt, talk to a doctor or nutritionist. Don't just listen to someone on the internet. So I'm gonna be talking about the stuff that I'm using. And at any point, if you wanna go and check out any of the products that I'm using, I'll link them down below. So if you want to check it out, then there will be links to it down below to make it easier for you for searching. So one of the most popular things that people seem to focus on when it comes to supplementation is a protein powder. And a protein powder is handy, but it isn't mandatory. It isn't something that you have to have. And if you don't have a protein powder, you're gonna be limiting the amount of muscle you can gain or anything like that they are a supplement so ideally like a lot of these things here if you can try and get it from a food source or a whole food source that is going to be the best situation you can have but we've got to be re realistic and realize that not everyone has access let's say to every single um, vitamin or mineral throughout the day their diets whether it's a lifestyle or planning it's hard to get everything in in one day all the time in the right amount so sometimes a supplement is good to have when it comes to a protein powder i don't typically tend to use a protein protein powder. The reason why I've got this one is because I typically use them when I am trying to lose weight or doing a cut. The reason being is the best thing to do when you're trying to lose weight is to increase your protein. The reason being is it helps or try to slow down or limit the amount of muscle that you may lose. So again, having a higher protein diet during dieting is very, very handy for that. The other thing as well is it's good for just keeping you fuller for longer. The other thing is as well, they say up to 25% of the calories that we get from protein is used to actually break it down. So if you're having a high protein diet, it's gonna make you fuller for longer, but it's also gonna help losing weight a lot easier and maintaining that muscle. So I've actually still got some protein powder from the last time that I've done that. So every now and again, while I've got it, I might have a scoop after a workout depending on how much protein I've had throughout the day, but it's not something that I'm regimented about. So the protein nut powder that I have is a pre-protein. So for any of you that are aware, I eat a plant-based diet. I am a vegan, but my diet is plant-based. I don't eat a vegan diet because a vegan diet doesn't always necessarily mean that it's healthy for you. So I eat a whole foods plant-based diet and I haven't done any videos on it because I'm not trying to push it on anyone. It's one of those ones that I'm just going to lead by example with how I perform, what I do in a gym, or how I look and if people ask, then I'll give them the information. Because this has been brought up, I thought I'll talk about it in this. So I use a pea protein for a number of reasons and I've used pea protein even before I was plant-based. The reason being is for a lot of people, if you have a, a milk-based protein powder, so you've got your casein or you've got your whey and I've used a lot of them in the past before, they always tend to make me feel quite bloated. Even if I drank a lot of milk, it would make me feel quite bloated. And there's quite a lot of people that seem to suffer the same. They'll have a really, really nice protein powder and it just makes them feel bloated. So there's no point spending that money regardless of how much protein it has or how tasty it is. Every single time you have it, it makes you feel bloated and uncomfortable. So pea protein, for the, for the most part, a lot of people will say that very little of them get a bloated or an uncomfortable or a digestive issue from it. For some reason, this doesn't seem to bother people. A lot of vegans or plant-based people who typically go for soya, a lot of people get bothered by soya. It gives them an upset stomach. Some people are allergic to it. So again, a lot of people then push to pea protein as well. And for any of you that obviously gluten and intolerant, lactose intolerant, or anything, or soya, a pea protein is a great one to go for. So that's one reason why I go for it. The protein content is very high. I think this one's got 24 grams per 30 gram serving. So it's a very, very high amount. It's got a good amino acid profile. So all around, it's a very good protein and it's very, very affordable. I think this bag that I got here from Pure Source, uh, I think it was like 35 quid for five kilos. So that's really, really cheap compared to some of them 
out there you could be paying anything from 15 to 20 25 for just a kilo so very very affordable and great for any of you that are going to be adding it to smoothies so if you're not too bothered about it being the best tasting protein and this one tastes good but if you're going to be adding in loads of different products to it it doesn't really matter how much it tastes so that's the protein one out of the way the next one that i will is a multivitamin and the reason why i use a multivitamin is i kind of see it as an insurance policy to make sure that if i have a hectic day and i don't eat enough green veg or enough fruit or different a variety of different foods multivitamin i use is the wellman sport men's one the reason why i go for the sport one is like anything each person is different and their requirements of what they need each day is going to be different and if you're someone who is very very active exercises so you're very very active you do a lot of sport you do a lot of working out your requirements that you're going to need they're going to be a little bit more so that vitamin is aimed around people that are just more active so i go for that one again i'll leave a link to it down below and at least you know that a lot of your bases when it comes to a vitamin mineral are pretty much covered the next one i have is a vitamin d3 the reason being and this is probably one of those ones that a lot of doctors recommend it anyway and a lot of them are being trying to get it into our foods to fortify our foods with vitamin d especially depending on where you live is normally your main source of it is from sunlight but depending on where you live you might not get a lot of sunlight especially during portions of the year and depending on what your lifestyle is like whether you work in a factory and you're doing 12 hour shifts and you literally go when it's dark and you leave when it's dark or maybe you're someone that's just housebound you're just in the house a lot of the time you don't get out and also it's also dependent on where you live on the planet so even if you get direct sunlight depends how strong it is on how much vitamin d you're going to be able to get from that so it's very very worthwhile to get yourself a vitamin d obviously i've got a vitamin d3 version obviously this is a vegan version for any of you that are vegan at doing that um, my protein or my vegan do a really good range on lots of vitamins and minerals so you don't have to worry about that so a vitamin d is very very handy and it's one of those ones if you don't get enough of it it can lead to quite serious things so it's something you want to any doubt go to a doctor and get a blood test they'll be able to tell you if you're you know deficient or anything like that to make sure that you're getting a well-balanced diet but a vitamin d thing very affordable and very easy to take uh, the next thing I take is a vegan Amiga. The reason why I'm doing a, a vegan Amiga, obvious, for obvious reasons, but the main thing that people don't realize when they're having their cod liver oil or they're eating their fish, the oily fish to get their Amiga fees, the EPA and DHA, they think that the fish produce it. The thing is the fish don't produce it. They actually get it from algae or down the food chain as they eat little fish and little fish and so forth as it goes up the food chain. The actual Amiga freeze that we're after actually come from the algae. So instead of going through the middleman, either for ethical reasons or whatever, just in general, for any of you that have watched Sea Spiracy, the different things that are in the ocean at the minute, the pollutants, the plastics and everything like that, that all goes into the food. And obviously when you start eating bigger fish or the oily fish, you're not only getting your EPA and DHA, but you're getting other things there. So if you go for a, say, a, a vegan Amiga DHA one, you're getting it directly from the original source, which is the algae. Really cheap, doesn't cost a lot. I think I got 90 soft shells there. So that's like three months worth. Really cheap, really affordable especially with like my vegan they tend to have a lot of offers on there and if you buy so much you tend to get like a sale off but they have a lot of sales on there so that's like anything like instead of like going to the middleman go directly to the source you tend to get it cheaper there's nothing else that you're getting any byproducts or things on top of it you're just getting what you need from the product so the next thing i have is thyroglobin b12 vitamin C, B6 and things like this. The reason why I have this, it's just because I, I wanna make sure that if I'm really, really active and I'm doing lots of stuff, that I'm getting enough energy. It's one of those fizzy ones, so it tastes like orange aid. I have it with my other vitamins and it's just to keep topping up. The other thing with vitamin B12 is it's water soluble. So it's very, very difficult if you overdose on it because if you have too much of it, your body will just pee it out. So again, it's one of those ones that B12, especially if you are plant-based or vegan, that's one of those ones you wanna pay special consideration to because you need to get it from full sort of supplemented food so having that is sort of like your general ones so we're going to start moving on to some different supplements that some of you have may have never heard of you're going to have to do your own research on it from the stuff that i've seen that it literally got me on there straight away some of it you would have heard of some of you haven't but we'll go from there so for many of you have probably heard of turmeric Turmeric has made a massive leap when it comes to supplementation. The reason being is the thing that gives turmeric its color is the curcumin. And they've been doing lots and lots of research and realizing that the curcumin that's found in turmeric has anti-cancer properties. And there's been lots of things where it's slowed down, it stopped it from even producing, and it's great for in in inflammation. So a lot of companies are pumping out these turmeric pills where you're getting very, very little amount of turmeric within your pill but they're cost, it's costing you a lot of money. 
where instead of just doing that, I just get a bag of it. Like I found a kilo of it. I think it was on Amazon or eBay and it's like a kilo of it for like 15 quid, where normally it's like 120 little soft shells or capsules are like that much, if not more. And you're getting very little with this. I buy a kilo's bag of it, put it into a little container. And every single time that I make a shake or if I have something after the gym, it's the most important time I think to have one of these because whenever you work out, you are producing free radicals when you train. You're causing damage, you're causing stress, you're causing inflammation to your body. So the best time to get that in and to help your body fight those free radicals and to get antioxidants in is to do it after a workout. So I normally have these and use a lot of this after my workout to give my body what it needs to recover and to come back with more energy. So I normally just use like a tablespoon of this and I just dump it into a shake. It makes the, the shake look horrible, but the taste actually, you don't really taste it, but at least I'm getting a pure source version. I'm not having a capsule, I'm not having a small amount. I know how much I'm having, I'm having a pure source turmeric. I then chuck that in, gain inflammation. And if it's true down the line, it does have the ability to fight cancer or stop cancer from producing. And cancer is a massive killer in our world. I don't think paying 15 quid for a kilo, if it does work in the future, is too much to, act to, to ask. So I'm gonna be doing it with the idea of prevention is probably the best cure. So if I can do it and it does something, fantastic. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is amla powder. Many of you probably have never heard of this. It's also known as Indian gooseberry, but it's one of the highest antioxidants on the planet when it comes to amla powder. It's great for boosting your immunity. I found it on the channel nutritionfacts.org. If I can remember to do it, I'll try and leave a link to the video in which I came across this about how it has the ability to lower blood pressure, to lower blood sugar better than like medicines. The fact that it's been used in Indian culture for a very, very long time. And it's basically known as, the term superfood is so loosely tucked around. Like anything is labeled as a superfood. But when they've actually tested AMLA and it's had the ability to lower blood pressure more effectively than statins, it's had the ability to lower blood sugar levels better than like um, medication for people that are diabetic. The fact that it has the ability to do all of that and it's very, very high in antioxidants, which is just very, very good for your body in general, especially for your immune system. It's one of those ones that once I saw that, I thought, right, I'm gonna start adding this into my shake. And it's sort of like the booster of my food and a true superfood and they can compared it to something like blueberries. I think it has like a hundred times more antioxidants than blueberries. And everyone thinks that blueberries have the most antioxidants or because of the color, they're really good for you. And they are, but this just smashes it out of the water. So amla is something that I've been using for quite a long time and doesn't really have a taste, but you're gonna wanna put it with something that does because it's always it's a bland shake if you just had that with water. They say just spoon it up with water, but I definitely find it mixed up better if you use a blender. So the next thing that I have is iris sea moss. Iris sea moss I came across I can't remember if it was on Instagram and they were talking about it and it was something like it has 102 of the minerals that the body requires it literally is nature's multivitamin and if I looked at the site I looked at different little studies and I think there's a Dr. Sebi or something that's constantly promoting iris sea moss and the fact that the vitamins and minerals that it has apparently it's antiviral apparently it's antibacterial it's basically a superfood so I thought hey you know what I'll look at loads of different videos regarding it get people to talk about what's so good about it have a look if there's any studies on it and after seeing all the stuff that i saw i thought hey if it can do all the things it says then it's definitely worth me start to start taking it like i said i'm one of those ones i'm all about prevention that's probably the best cure that you can have if it's very very beneficial to my body then i think it's worth having our health is our most important thing we need to do everything we can to look after it and give our body exactly what it needs if it has all of those things in it and like i said if it's a massive multivitamin but it's a natural source as opposed to say take taking a multivitamin tablet, and this is gonna be fantastic for the body, and if all those other benefits are true, then it's gonna be something that I think more and more people should be adding in. I'll leave links to all of the products down below, but my advice to you is every single product that I've talked about today, go and do your research. Have a look if it's something you wanna take, see if it's something you can afford, see if it's something you wanna add into your daily food requirement. Look into it, get as much advice for it. If you're still in doubt and you're worried about it at all, always consult with your doctor or a nutritionist if you have one of you have if you take medications make sure that these foods won't interact with your medications or anything like that always do your own due diligence do your own research and don't just listen to me or anyone on the on the internet when it comes to nutrition 
find something that works for you and consult with your doctor. So guys, let me know what you think about that. Let me know if there's any of these products that you have seen before or you're using yourself or you haven't seen and you're gonna go and check it out. Comment down below, I'd love to know what you think. And if you have any questions, please comment down there and I'll do my best to help you out. If you took value from this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video.